What you guys got another video here for you. So here we're taking a look at Windows Security or Windows Defender, whatever you want to call it. It is known as Windows Security now. Is this good enough to be used in 2022? I get asked this question quite a lot and people always ask me, which is the best antivirus software? And uh, is this good enough? Is it going to protect me in 2022? A lot of people are using Windows uh, Defender or Windows Security. They are using it uh, because it's free. It comes built into Windows. And uh, basically, it's going to be uh, protecting you with an old sort of technology, which is called heuristics and uh, signatures. This is how it works. So it's been around since the 80s, since uh, Norton and McAfee were making antivirus programs back there. It uses that form of technology to keep you safe. Now, you may be thinking, that doesn't sound that great. Well, it's not the best way of protecting your computer, but it's what you're going to get when you get something for free from Microsoft. So the way the heuristics works is Windows Defender Antivirus will issue alerts for suspicious activities such as an attempt to make unusual changes to your Windows files, uh, registry keys, and startup locations. And it's essential that you keep uh, frequent updates to the signature database to make sure that your system is uh, protecting you from known threats. And these get added to the signature database. So it's important that you keep your antivirus updated. So what will happen if you go and upgrade this and install, say, for instance, uh, say Norton or Avast or Kaspersky or Bitdefender or any of these ones, well, basically it will disable Windows Defender and you would then be using uh, your brand new paid software or free software which you've downloaded and installed. Let me just show you what that looks like. When you log into your system with an antivirus program on here, it will say inside here, inside your protection area, it will say, your antivirus program is running this Norton 360 is turned on. That's because this system has Norton 360 on it. And you can see here, no action is needed and it's basically taken over. And uh, you've got this area down here that says Microsoft Defender antivirus options. And you can see you can keep uh, using the current provider and get Microsoft Defender to check uh, periodically for threats. If you want to, you can toggle this on as well, and it will automatically check alongside uh, Norton as well. I'll just leave that off because you don't really need uh, that amount of uh, protection. It's just going to end up confusing the system and probably slowing the system up, having uh, two uh, checks going at the same time. These are your scanning options here, and uh, you've got your account protections on here as well you've got your firewall protections now the firewall has never been that great on windows to be honest is a bit of a letdown but it's free and it's been around for a while you've got your uh, allow an app to go through the firewall you can click on here and control your apps inside here it's pretty basic uh, but that is what you can expect from microsoft and their free uh, app for protecting you so going down through here, you've got some uh, firewall notification settings and you've also got your advanced settings here. And uh, believe you me, it's not that advanced. It is what it is. It's got some inbound rules and some outbound rules. And these are what you can mess around with uh, on here. Now, there is options available out there on the Internet if you want to use, for instance, something like Windows Firewall Control Software. So let me quickly show you the website where you can uh, download that software. So Windows Firewall Control uh, is a powerful tool which extends the functionality of Windows Firewall and provides quick access to the most frequent options uh, inside your Windows Firewall. You can read more about this. Uh, but basically, you would go on here and it will take you to this page here and you can then download. You can see it's getting updated and it gives you a bit more control over uh, the firewall here. It gives you more access to other features here. So it makes it a lot more easier to use. I'll leave all the links and information in the video description if you're interested in that. If you want to see a video of it, let me know in the comments section below. So you can restore your uh, firewall to default settings here. Now, normally malware would tamper with these and allow itself to come through and start disabling uh, features and things like that. That's what it does. 
Now we have the app and browser control for your browser. And this is for your reputation based protection, isolated browsing and also exploit uh, protection here for your browsing as well. You can make changes to some of this stuff here. So it's not the best, but it does help keep you safe when browsing the Internet. You've got your core isolation set in here. Again, you can toggle this on. And uh, some people have said that this slows down their PC. I've never seen that sort of impact on it. But it does apparently, according to Microsoft, uh, reduce malware by something along the lines of 50 odd percent, something like that, uh, which is a good thing. So going down to your device performance and uh, health here, and then you've got your family options, and then you've got some protection history and stuff like that. Now, there is an area down here, like I said, for ransomware and things like that. You are not going to get protected from ransomware with this system. It's just not going to. So don't rely on this as an, an out and out ransomware protection tool because it's not going to. And you're going to end up, if you click on ransomware, get your files encrypted. Now, remember, your antivirus program will not protect you against zero day vulnerabilities. These are computer software related vulnerabilities which are unknown. And these can be on the computer for years. And we've seen these over the years being found by Microsoft or other security analysts that will actually then bring it to the attention of Microsoft. And they try to find a fix to patch and correct it. And this will not protect you against uh, these particular types of vulnerabilities. And this could be said for uh, ransomware or malware that's undetected because it's not known to the antivirus that is trying to protect your PC. People go clicking on it. And because it's not known, it doesn't actually pick up on it unless you have some sort of specialist ransomware protection software, which detects patterns the way ransomware works to block it. And this is why your Windows Defender is going to constantly scan your Windows directory to make sure the files haven't been changed with malicious files like malware and things like that. It's going to check the heuristics and check against the signature database to make sure these are not malicious files in here. It will also check with patterns and, and the way things are, are happening with your PC. And if it finds anything weird that's happening, it will then flag it and then basically scan it or send it up into the cloud to check it. And uh, if they find it's a new uh, type of file, they will add it to the signature database and that will be then spread out to all the other users around the world and it will then protect you from future attacks. So how does this malware get installed on your PC? Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's generally what you're doing on your computer. So for instance, Windows Defender will obviously scan your files and folders regularly to find out whether there's any changes to the operating system and things like that. And because of the advancements in uh, Windows Defender, you may be browsing the internet and it will tell you this website is unsafe and uh, it will tell you to back out. And again, emails is a big one where you're not getting pre-scanned emails. You're getting emails coming in with attachments to them, which have executable files or dodgy files attached to them. You click on them and eventually you get infected or you've got dodgy links in those emails, which are phishing and taking you off to a place where it's asking you to do some task. And there's loads of things like this. Again, downloading applications or patches or cracks off the internet will get you infected as well. This is why these sites will tell you to disable your antivirus program while you're running this program so it can get onto the system and infect your operating system. Another one I see is people running scripts from dodgy sites to activate windows. And you can see if you know how to read a script, you'll see that it's getting set off to another website to download a file and it runs in the background. It's asked you to download the file and turn off your antivirus program so it can run correctly. But it's telling me that there's something going on there. And this is why you shouldn't do it because you're going to end up getting infected with rootkits, backdoors, uh, which allow people to get into your computer and you wouldn't even know about it because you turned off your antivirus program or you're one of them smart people that doesn't even run an antivirus program and doing dodgy stuff like that on the internet. This is how people get infected. So don't rely on any antivirus program to keep you 100% safe because there is no antivirus program out there on the market that will keep you 100% safe when you're doing dodgy stuff like that on the internet. So bear that in mind. So if we look at the uh, virus and threat protection settings for managed settings here, 
and you click on this area here, you can see real-time protection, cloud delivered protection, and you can read some of this information of what it's doing and the automatic sample submission. Uh, this is essential for uh, keeping the heuristics and signature databases updated for malware and samples that are being detected on your PC. This will then get sent back to uh, Microsoft. They will then study these files, get the signatures for these malicious files, and get them added to their database. And that's why uh, when you see people doing uh, virus testing on the internet with these YouTube videos, and it detects a lot of them, it's because they're already known uh, viruses or known files to uh, to them. So this is what the detection rates are finding. So the big battle for antivirus programs is new viruses that are out there or new malware out there that has not been detected by the antivirus programs. And that's because they've not been added to the database. And this is how sometimes they get onto the computer and disable your antivirus program and they manage to slip through the net. And the paid premium antivirus software that you can purchase generally has better security and better protection against malware, whereas it will be detect behavioral patterns and things like that from malware. And with Windows security, it's relying on heuristics and signatures to protect you, which generally sometimes means that you'll get infected before it actually even detects it. And this is the problem with this sort of uh, protection method. Now, with a bit of common sense on what to download and what not to download and what to install on your system and what to click on will uh, go a long way with uh, Windows Defender. So if you are using Windows Defender, there's nothing to panic about as long as you understand what to do correctly and what not to do, you should be perfectly fine. Remember, back up your data on a regular basis and store it in three different locations. And that way, if you do get hit with ransomware, you will always have your data backed up and that way you can always reinstall Windows and put your data back and it will be completely safe. If you don't do uh, backups on a regular basis and you're relying on your antivirus program to protect you, you could be hit at any time and uh, lose everything. So bear that in mind. Now, if you take a look at AV test here, it will basically give you a list of all of the latest since uh, February 2022, it gives you a list and readouts of some of the results here. And you can click on any of these and it will give you the information for uh, these particular uh, antiviruses. So you can click on this and it'll give you a full review here. Now, one for Windows Defender is listed here as well. I'm not going to go through it all, but basically I'll leave the link in the video description and you can check this out and it will give you all the information about uh, Windows Defender and whether you think it's good enough uh, to keep you safe in 2022. Personally, like I said, bit of common sense, Windows Defender should be perfectly fine to use in 2022, as long as you know what you're doing and you're making regular backups of your data. Anyway, that is going to be about it for this video. Don't forget to check out my YouTube channel for some other videos that I've done. There's over 2,500 videos on this channel. Also, don't forget we have a Discord server if you want to join. Uh, it's free to join and we run uh, some tech support over there and also have some technology chat. If you want to join for a chat, then by all means do so. If you have joined my YouTube members group, uh, don't forget to let me know on my Discord server and I'll give you the correct role. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.